Hey guys, happy Friday. I'm Daniel Norton. Welcome to my studio. And today we are going to talk about Studio Essentials. I think we're going to call this one. This might be a small series. Um, I get this question all the time. I did make a video once before about kind of a starting lighting kit. And people ask me though to go beyond that. So I think I'm going to start with the most basic kind of starter stuff in this one. And then we're going to make more going up if you guys are interested. Let me know in the comments below if you're, if you're interested in this or if this is just like not worth your time. I'm also gonna be vague uh, because obviously we all shoot differently. So, but I will make some assumptions. One is that you are shooting inside some kind of a studio, a relatively small space, um, you know, not some massive space with Sykes and that you will not have like built in, you know, racks and stuff with lights. So you're gonna use some kind of a flash or some kind of constant light so you're gonna move around. So if I were, after I get my lighting kit, if I were to think about things I'd want to get, like if I came into an empty space, right, and I was looking around, I mean, I, I guess you can't see it because they're off to the side, but what are the things that I consider like studio equipment? So for instance, in my travel kit, uh, I have lots of little light stands, which you probably do too, right? But, well, you have light stands, but in a studio, I almost exclusively use C stands or sentry stands. They are, to me, the standard light mounting stand. Now, filmmakers that might be watching this might be saying, oh God, because filmmakers don't typically put lights on C-stands, but that's a whole other thing. So I like C-stands because they have a small footprint. They can hold a decent amount of weight. Generally speaking, you're gonna get them fitted with arms and the arms are gonna allow you to put your light in various positions. And the arms are gonna allow you to hold various things like reflectors, diffusers, and anything else, gobos. So C-stand just makes sense. If you kick a C-stand as you're walking by, it might jiggle the light, but you're probably not gonna knock the light way off the inside of the room, and I kick stuff all the time. <laughs> so, and you can nest them together so you can get stuff really close. So if I was starting a basic studio, and, I mean, I'm not, talk, I'm not gonna throw out any kind of, I'm not worried about how, how much things cost. So I'm sorry if you put a comment below that you don't have the much money. This is basically what I would do. Because as we've discussed before, I think you can do mostly anything with three lights. I think I would start with three C-stands. Now, you might be saying, but you're gonna use them for cards and stuff too. That's true, and if I use them for the cards, then I would just use my light stands in those cases for lights. Three is a good place to start. I think we have like eight here that we use um, on a regular basis and you use them up quickly. So three C-stands is a good place to start. With those C-stands, I would have the arms, of course, and uh, 650 pins, which are so you can mount a light to it. I would also get three sandbags because you don't want to knock things over. You're going to want, uh, probably, depending on if you have a ceiling or not, I recommend auto poles. By the way, I'll put links down below for the stuff just in case you don't know what they are. Uh, auto poles are essentially uh, poles where you stretch like this and with some pressure they go to the ceiling. Um, they're great for putting up backgrounds because you can get them super close to the wall. So a couple of auto poles are, are super useful. Some kind of a crossbar. We just use a piece of wood here, but there's all kinds of crossbars you can get and some paper, right? I, I always recommend paper. People do ask me a lot, like what do you use for backgrounds? What do you recommend? I think if you're just starting especially, I would go with paper. I mean, I'm not just starting and I mostly use paper. And the reason for that is because paper is relatively inexpensive and it is something you can swap out a lot. Whereas if I spend $200 on a beautiful printed background or even $80 on a printed background, I'm gonna feel ob obliged to use it all the time, right? Paper, if I spend 50 bucks on a roll of paper and I can get a bunch of shoots out of it and I can, uh, because I'm a commercial photographer, I charge clients for it. It's just a great expendable piece of equipment, right? So two auto poles, some kind of a crossbar, three C-stands, three sandbags. You, you already have your lights, right? If you are a product photographer, I would get some kind of a, saw, a couple of saw horses. Or, you know, you can get a supersonic photo table, but a couple of saw horses with a nice piece of... Uh, Plywood on top is generally a good enough table for most things. The reason why I recommend that versus a table is because you can bring them up and down and adjust the height as you need. So a couple of sawhorses, piece of plywood on top, you're gonna want gaffer's tape, which hopefully you already have if you're doing things. You know, these are kind of the basic things that you're gonna want for a studio that aren't directly related to any particular type of lighting or anything like that. They are useful tools to just always have around. I've done other videos about grip, things like A clamps, like squeezy clamps are super useful as well you know, super clamps, things like that. But I think that you probably might already have those if you're working. If not, you're going to want to get a variety of clamps. And I've done a couple videos. I'll put a link to, to these other videos where I talk about clamps and stuff, but I'm just gonna rattle off a quick list so you can buy it all right now. 
I would go with three C-stands, three sandbags, with 650 pins and arms, obviously. Two auto poles for your backgrounds, a crossbar, a couple of rolls of paper. The, the sawhorse table thing that I just described, two-ish, two, two or more uh, super clamps, uh, maybe a half dozen A clamps, like clippy clamps, and that should get you started. Other things like extension cords and stuff you want to pick up as you go, depending on what you need. And let me know if you want to see more like this and we can keep building the studio. Maybe I'll keep a running list of what we'll build up our studio over the course of time. And obviously we can add stuff for specific types of projects, but again, I'm being as generic as possible. So let me know if this was helpful. If so, hit the like button. Uh, go ahead, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. Let me know in the comments below what else you guys want to see. And I'll see you next time.